Diary of Fate. Fate plays no favorites. It could happen to you. Book 81, page 409. Yes, here it is. The life record of Matt Cooper. A detailed account of high adventure in distant land. Yes, Matt, as a deep sea diver, your work carried you to the far corners of the globe, where you learned much of the complex flora and fauna of the world. But you, Matt Cooper, learned nothing of the simplest truth of the universe, the inexorable principle of justice. And because of that ignorance, now I, fate, can look ahead to a single instant of decision in your life. I can't stand this. What's the word? Tell me, Matt. What is it? I... I'm crazy. It's uh, hard to swing. It's what? What have you found? Is it gold, Matt? Is it? No. No, I'm afraid it's not, George. I'm afraid it's just plain old-fashioned steel. Like all mortals, Matt Cooper ultimately stood at the crossroads of decision. But his choice was the path of evil. Then I, fate, intervened. And now, because of a little thing, a broken key... Matt Cooper soon will be dead. But mark well my word, you who listen, for fate is not unjust. In a moment, I will read again from the Diary of Fate. Before the unusual story of Matt Cooper, here is our announcer. Matt Cooper will find, as others have found, that little things, the tools with which I, fate, work, are beyond the calculations of mortal minds. Remember, Matt, how it all started? You were aboard your deep-sea diving barge off a remote village in the Philippine Islands, where you had been led by the attractive adventuress Nina Lawrence for she believed the treasure to be hidden within a sunken ship 20 fathoms below. You had just completed another of your many futile searches under the sea for that treasure. And now, together with your partner, George, and a mechanic named Barney, you discussed an unpromising future. Well, George had the tenth dive and still no luck. Yeah, certainly looks like Nina was taken in all right. That's the funny part. Why should a cabin boy that Nina befriended lie to her on his deathbed? Huh. Maybe he had a sense of humor. Well, maybe you don't. This is only another job to you, Barney, but for Nina, George, and me, it's everything. Hey, easy now, Matt. Don't start blaming Barney here. Yeah? Well, I... I'm sorry, Barney. I guess it's a he. Sure, sure, Matt. You know, a guy shouldn't spend too much time in a rat and fest of hole like this place. Maybe you fellas ought to bunk out of here on the barge with me. No dice, Barney. We couldn't leave Nina alone on shore. That's right. Besides, she's the only thing around here that keeps our morale up. Well, you better start bubbling over now, brother, because here she comes. Oh, hi, boys. Hi, Nina. Morning, Nina. Morning, Nina. You sleep well? No. I was too busy dreaming. Usual stuff. A luxurious bubble bath. Smart clothes. Uh-uh. This dream was about the treasure. We found the gold, and believe it or not, it was right in the captain's private safe, just like the cabin boy said. Oh, there it was, bars and bars of beautiful gold. We were rich and famous. And guess what? At a big reception back home, I made a speech about it. The uh, whole story, huh? Uh-huh. Started with the ship sinking during the war and went right up to a year ago when I met the cabin boy in Manila. Then there was the auto accident. And, and the boy's dying words. The gold, Miss Nina, it's in the private safe in the captain's cabin. <laughs> we know all that part by heart. But what happened then, Nina? Then I woke up. <laughs> That's a great story. 
Nina, if you pile out of that boat, I'll get started for sure. Come on. Say, Barney, on the way out, will you bring my medicine? Yeah. You know, I still figure I can lick this anemia and get back to diving myself. Okay, George. I'll try to remember. Well, Nina, we got news for you. We didn't find that gold again. But we're not licked yet. Well, I am. That's why I came out here to talk to you, boys. I'm getting out. Right away, too. Oh, no. No, Nina, you can't leave it. You can't leave us now. That's right, Nina. We're we're used to you. Both of us. Oh, it's just a habit, fellas. You'll get over it. <laughs> Look, when I met you two six months ago, I had the information on a sunken treasure. You had the equipment to get it. We formed a partnership and had a go at it. Well, it, it hasn't paid off. I'm sorry, but I, I'm just tired of this this kind of living. But we'll fix things up for you, Nina. Yeah, yeah, we'll take a day off, build your new shack. No, no, that won't do the trick. My mind's made up, boys. Gee, Nina, I, I wish I could make you stay. Yeah, so do I. I'm going to miss you, Nina. I'm going to miss you an awful lot. Yes, Matt. Now that Nina was about to leave... You suddenly realized that you were in love with her. The thought grew in your mind. And by that afternoon, as you waited to drive her the 60 miles to Tacloban and the airport, you were impatient. About ready, Nina? Oh, yes, Matt. Come. Is the jeep there? Uh-huh. Yeah, happy in there, and off. Oh, thanks. Yeah, what is it? What's the matter? This blasted ignition key. It's been out of shape. Oh. Uh. You might try inserting it all the way before you can. <laughs> yeah, you got something. Oh, and, uh, Mr. Cooper, another thing. Let's take it easy over this mountain road. You know, those hairpin curves give me the willies. Besides, I've got a whole week in Taklavon before my plane arrives. Yeah, I know you have. Nina, Nina, there's, there's something I want to say, I... I don't know how to start. Oh, Matt, that curve. Watch out. Uh, I'm sorry. I guess I was thinking about you instead of my driving. Then pull over, Matt. We'll talk now and drive later. Yeah, okay. Nina, I might as well come right to the point. I'm in love with you. I know you are, Matt. What? You know, but but how? Many? What's the difference? And you, how do you feel? I don't know, Matt. Oh, I care for you, of course, but love. Well, it's not that simple. You see, I'm kind of different. Clowning around looking for a treasure of gold is fun for about six months, maybe a year, but it's no good for a lifetime. Not for little Nina, at any rate. And it's money, Nina. Nice things, nice places. Well, that's part of it. Part of it? What other reason could you have for leaving? George. George? What's George got to do with him? Everything. He's in love with me, too, Matt. Oh, no, no, I couldn't do that. You're wrong, Nina. No, I'm not wrong, Matt. He told me so himself last night. So, you see, altogether I have three good reasons for leaving. I don't care about roughing it anymore, and I don't want to come between you and George. At any rate, that's the way things stand right now. Maybe we'll meet later, Matt. Maybe things will be different then. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure of it, Nina. I'm sure things will be different then. Even as you spoke, Matt Cooper... The double meaning of your own words became clear to you. Nina would be in Takloban for only another week. That gave you exactly seven days in which to establish yourself financially and defeat your partner George as a rival. It was late when you finally returned to camp, and George was already asleep. In your own quarters, you spent the long night tossing restlessly. And with each hour, your resentment of George increased. The next morning, you set out at once in search of him. George. George, where are you? I'm out here, Matt. 
Find a house. Do some painting. Nina, get the taco barn all right? Uh, of course she's out there all right. That's good. Say, what do you think of this job? Found a few extra cans of blue paint around and thought I'd spruce up the gear. I'm not interested in your sprucing, George. Huh? Hey, what's the matter with you, anyway? What is it? Well, what do you think? Wait for two cents, I... Matt, get... watch out. The paint can. What? Take no confound it. Now look what you've done. Blue paint all over me. My clothes, my hands, even my gold ring. Hand me that turf. I get it yourself. I'm through working with or for you. You don't make sense. And as soon as I get this paint off my hands... Matt. Matt, look. Look, this paint on my ring. What about it? It's blue paint, isn't it? Like the blue paint on the small safe door in the captain's cabin. Yeah, but... But look, Matt. Look at the color when it's over the gold on my ring. Huh? Say... You don't think that... that the safe door is made of gold? Why not, Matt? We know the skipper was a screwy old geezer. Why couldn't he have made the door of gold and given a couple of coats of blue paint for disguise? But gold is soft, good. It's no good for a safe door. The skipper wouldn't be worried about anybody breaking in on him, but he might have been suspicious of his supposedly trustworthy men, the purser, the first mate. Matt, it's only a hunch, but we've got to try it. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta try it, or yes, Matt. Because of a little thing, a splash of paint, your partner had an idea that could be worth thousands of dollars. He rushed out to the barge, and as George hurriedly explained his hunch to Barney, who started the mechanical air pump, you got into your diver suit, descended to the wreck below. But as you entered the black waters inside the sunken ship, you were forced to move slowly through the narrow passageways, lest your life-giving airline foul on a jagged metal edge. You described your every move to your anxious partner above. But an hour later, when you finally entered the captain's cabin, your thoughts were only of Nina and what the gold would mean to you alone. If the gold were really there. Well, so far, so good. I'm in the captain's cabin now. I can see the safe by the light of my lamp. It's painted blue, all right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's blue. I'll be over to it in a minute now. I've got my fingers crossed, man. Uh, we'll know soon enough. Yeah, I'm up to it now. George! The pump! I don't know. It's kicked off. Barney! Barney, get on the hand pump, quick! Evan, name, hurry! Hurry, George! Well, that's going, Matt. Hold on. We'll have it going in a... There. There it goes. Matt! You okay now? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm all right. Let's see that Barney keeps turning that hand wheel. And there he goes. And at the safe door. And they start chipping away. Hey. Matt, I can't stand this. What's the word? Tell me, Matt. What is it? I'm cramped here. How do you swing it? What have you found? Is it the gold? Is it Matt? No. No, I'm afraid it's not good. I'm afraid it's just plain old-fashioned steel. Now, Matt Cooper, you had reached an evil decision. And even as you stared in rapt fascination... At the unmistakable glint of the gold before you, you lied to your partner above. You knew that soon you would have to destroy him. Soon I will write again under the name of Matt Cooper in the Diary of Faith. In a moment, our story will continue. But now, here is our announcer. Yes, 
mat, deep in the eternal shadows of the sea, you made a decision for evil. When you came to the surface, the tropical sun was bright. But the dark thoughts of murder remain locked in your heart. As you elaborated on your lie about the failure to find the gold, disappointment grew in George's eyes. And two hours later, in the house on shore, George had given up. Well, Matt, I guess that does it. I'm through. A crazy hunch, anyway, to think that old skipper might have cast a safe door out of gold. Well, I think I'll go to Tacloban right away, tonight. All right. What's the hurry, George? I'm fed up. I'll make the arrangements to dispose of the gear and book passage to Manila and... And maybe drop in on Nina? She's going to be in Tacloban another five days. You're not kidding me, George. I know how you feel about her. What do you mean? I'm not blind. You're in love with her, and it's written all over you. Oh, don't get me wrong, George. I think it's great. I do love her, Matt. Someday I'm going to marry her. But right now, that someday's a long way off. I've got to have money first. A girl like Nina... I know exactly what you're going to say, believe me. We didn't find the gold, and we're almost broke, so... There's really no big hurry, is there? No, I guess there isn't. Oh, by the way, I asked Barney to bring my medicine in off the barge. You see him, get it for me, will you? Sure. And you never can tell, George. If you relax a while, something might come up that'll take care of all your worries. You've been treasure hunting too long, Matt. You're expecting miracles. But you weren't expecting miracles, were you, Matt? No. You were merely gambling for time until you could devise a satisfactory method for murder. A murder you intended to commit some time before Nina left Takroban. An hour later, your mind was busy with your plan when Barney came to the house. Well, the pump motor shot, Matt. Try to fix it, but it's no use. It'll have to go to the shop. But, you know, it doesn't matter no how. Now that we'll be moving in a couple of days. Moving? Who says we're moving? Huh? Well, we've got to get all this gear packed. No, and... no. <laughs> it's all taken care of. What are you talking about? Sure, sure. Saving us all the work and the worry, see? A friend of mine's coming out tomorrow to see me. He's been looking for a rig. You take the whole outfit just as is. I mentioned it to George, and he's in favor of it, too. You, you say this guy's coming out tomorrow? Yeah, that's right. That's right. What's the, what's the matter, man? Matter? Why, for nothing, huh? I just didn't know you had friends with that kind of money. Oh, sure. This guy's got contact. Big contact. He can get the dough right away. He'll be out early tomorrow, so I better go get the equipment and check. Now, wait a minute. You leave that gear like it is. Don't sew any of it until I tell you to. I... I'll help you with it tonight after but, dinner. Uh, oh, but... Oh, you're the boss. Hey, here's that bottle of pills for George. You told me to bring it in. Yeah, I'll take them. And, Barney, don't bother George about the gear, understand? Yeah. You and I will take care of it tonight. Now you had to move fast. You racked your brain for a logical means of killing George at once. And then you became aware of the medicine. The red capsule filled with dark powder that George took for his anemia. He went to the pantry and poured the contents out onto the table. Then you took the can of rat poison from its shelf. Empty three of the capsules and fill them with a deadly powder. You put the can of poison away and drop the three capsules back into the bottle. At that instant, the door behind you opened. George. What's the matter, man? Uh, you, you startled me. Hey, what are you up to? You look as guilty as a kid stealing cookies. Me? Uh, well, I guess I feel guilty. You see, uh, Hey, that's my medicine. What's going on here, anyway? Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. I set the bottle down and knocked it over like a clumsy oaf. I spilled most of them on this dirty table. These are all ruined. Oh, for Pete's sake. Well, luckily, there are three left in the bottle, anyway. That's enough for tonight. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And you can get more in Taco Bell tomorrow. I, I'm really sorry, George. Oh, forget it. But I don't figure on going to Taco Bell now. Changed my mind. Barney's got a buyer for our gear coming out here tomorrow. Yeah, I know. But that's all the more reason why you should go. You ought to have a line on that guy. Check up on his credit and all before we sell out. Oh, I don't know. Barney swears by the guy. Yeah, but you know how Barney is. 
You're nuts to rely on him completely in a deal like this. Well, maybe you're right. Certainly I'm right. If you leave after dinner tonight, you can get into the mountains before it gets too dark. You know what that road is. I could get killed driving up there in the dark. Yes. A man could die on the mountain road after dark, Matt. It had happened before. And you were counting on that. You knew how the poison would react. You would watch rats stop short an hour after swallowing it. Then twist helplessly in convulsion and pain. The convulsion seized the driver of a speeding automobile on the treacherous mountain road. There was no doubt of what would happen. No one would ever question the method of his death. At dinner that night, you had no appetite, Matt. You watched with impatience as George ate heartily. Then, at last, the meal was over. What's the matter, Matt? Hardly touched your food. I don't know. Just not hungry. Yeah, a change will do us both a lot of good. You can say that again, partner. Well, I guess I'll get my stuff together and shove off. But, George, you... You forgot to take your pills. Huh? Oh, so I did. Pass me the water, will you? Yeah, here you are. Might as well take them all. Just three left. Oh, there. That ought to make my blood red. Yeah? Yeah, that certainly ought to. Well, I better get going. I'll give you a hand with your bags. Never mind. Why don't you round up Barney and go on out to the barge? There's a lot to be done. Now, whatever you say, George. I just wanted to be sure you got started. Don't worry. I'll be on my way in ten minutes. Had nothing to worry about now, Matt. When your partner left, you knew he'd never come back. Because in less than two hours, he would be dead. You found Barney waiting at the launch. You got aboard, and as he started the motor, you glanced back through the trees at the house. George was already busy with his luggage. Later, as you drew near the barge, you were sure that by now, George was well on his way. And so, with greedy impatience, you turned at once to the task before you. Now, bring a port side, Barney. Leave the diving rig clear. Okay, Matt. Well, what do you want to start on, Matt? Oh, we're not packing. I'm going to make a dive instead. Huh? You what? Going down to the wreck again, Barney, right now. And for the last time. Hey, but Matt, it... Oh, it's so late. The pump's busted, too. Hey, that's a two-hour dive, at least. The hand pump works, doesn't it? Sure, but you... And you're strong enough to run it, aren't you? Well, you know I am, Matt, but... Then you... let's get going. Come on, give me a hand with this suit. Hey, it's going to be dark before you get back. Barney, down there, it doesn't make any difference. And I can take care of the lines and everything else all by myself. You just keep that pump going. That's all you have, Mitch. Okay, okay. I don't like it, but I guess you know I what know you're doing. I know exactly what I'm doing, Barney. Exactly. This time, I've got a hunch upon that gold. And you can keep bet money on it. Lots of money. Let's go. Because of a little thing, a splash of paint, a treasure in gold had been discovered. Now, in a matter of minutes, you, Matt Cooper, would have that treasure for your own. Girded securely in the weighted diving suit, you sank below the surface of the sea and into the familiar darkening shadows of the depths. Soon, Matt, you would have everything you wanted in life. But heed well my words, you who listen. Fate is not a conspirator in evil. Soon I will record the final entry under the name Matt Cooper, in the Diary of Fate. In a moment, the surprising conclusion to the story of Matt Cooper. But now, here is our announcer. against the pressure of water far into the tangled steel hull of a sunken ship. You forgot about the poison you had given your partner. And you thought only of the treasure and Nina. And the constant hiss of air into your helmet 
assured you that everything was going right. But then, Matt, unknown to you, a little thing happened. I'm in the skipper's cabin now, Barney. How are you doing? Okay, okay. You've been down there an hour. Are you all right, Matt? Yeah, don't worry about me. Just keep that pump working. Now, Barney, this is it. That's half of it. I won't be long now. Barney. Barney, do you hear me? Barney. Barney, what, what's wrong up there? Barney, where are you? Barney's gone. This is George, man. George? No. No, it can't be. George, you... It's okay, Matt. I sent Barney ashore to fix the car. Funny little thing happened. You know how you bent the ignition key? Well, I finished it. It twisted off in the lock so I couldn't start the motor. But I'll run the pump until Barney gets back. George, you... uh, I'm coming up. I gotta get up right now. George, you, you don't understand. I... Matt, don't call your lines. Remember, you... Oh, oh. George. George. My, my stomach. I... Oh, I... I can't move. George, bring me up. George, give that pump gone so I can get out of here. Can't you hear me? George. The pump. Yes, Matt Cooper. The poison which destroyed your partner's life also destroyed your own. And the treasure for which you sacrificed everything remained locked forever beneath the sea. And now it is time to close the book. In the case of Matt Cooper, as in the cases of all mortals, I, fate, am but the instrument of a plan. And the endless little things that happen are the tools with which I work. Heed well the moral, you who listen, and remember, there is a page for you in the Diary of Fate. Our cast included Herbert Lytton, Sammy Hill, Tom Holland, Donald Curtis, Gene...